Are you a forgiving person or do you constantly harbor bitterness and resentment? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. There is this story going around. It may or may not be totally accurate, but it is worth retelling for its relevance to today's gospel reading. On September 28, 1918, during World War I, a private, Henry Tandy, a British soldier serving near the French village of Markwing, encountered a wounded German soldier, but rather than shoot him, he spares the life of an upper 30-ish aged lance corporal. As Tandy later told sources, during the final moments of that battle, as the German troops were in retreat, a wounded German soldier entered Tandy's line of fire. I took aim, but couldn't shoot a wounded man, Tandy remembered, so I let him go. They were close enough to see into each other's eyes. The German soldier nodded in thanks and disappeared. In another battle, Tandy would later earn a Victoria Cross for conspicuous bravery. Tandy did not know the identity of the German soldier or the future atrocities to be associated with his act of forgiveness. A photograph ran in London newspapers of Tandy carrying a wounded soldier at an earlier battle in Ypres, France in 1914. The scene was later portrayed on canvas in a painting by the Italian artist Fortuno Matania, glorifying the Allied war effort. Then British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain traveled to Germany in 1938 to engage Adolf Hitler in a last-ditch effort to avert another war in Europe. He was taken by the Führer to his new country retreat in Bavaria. There, Hitler showed Chamberlain his copy of the Matanya painting, commenting, That's the man who nearly shot me. Hitler would state in 1941, When I returned from the war, I brought back home with me my experiences at the front. Out of them, I built my National Socialist community. Hitler didn't fully realize his previous forgiveness received. He had a notorious lack of regard for life. In today's Gospel reading, we read this compelling story only found in the book of Luke. We find Jesus invited into the house of Simon, a Pharisee. A woman, a sinner, perhaps a prostitute or at least a promiscuous one, bursts into the scene, bringing an alabaster box of ointment. She begins to cry and her tears fall upon Jesus' feet. She dries his feet with her long hair, kisses them and anoints them with ointment. Simon is shocked at the intrusion. He must have thought that if Jesus is the prophet he is touted to be, he should condemn her and drive her away, for she is a sinner. But Jesus gives Simon a lesson by telling him a story about two debtors, one owed more than the other, but the creditor forgives both debts. Jesus asks who is more grateful. Simon tells him it is the one with the bigger debt. The woman showed great love and was repentant. Jesus admonishes Simon for not showing him love unlike this woman. He did not give Jesus a kiss upon entry and anoint him with oil as was customary to be given to a guest. We reflect today on our penchant for labeling people for the rest of their lives for the wrong they have done to us in spite of their profession of wrongdoing and their profuse atonement. God works differently. He completely wipes out our sins upon our repentance alone. I turn back to Demas, my favorite sinner, who despite his shameful past, appealed to Jesus to forgive him. Jesus immediately forgave him and promised to bring him to heaven. Is this unfair? Well, God's concept of fairness is different from ours. If it were similar, we would not have hope of entering his heavenly kingdom. He expects us to also do the same, for we are made in his image and likeness, and he calls us to be holy. When we doubt the intention of people to seek our forgiveness and continue to put malice in their actions, we not only let the devil win over us by covering our being with pride, we also exhibit a weak faith despite our religiosity. We ourselves are guilty of forgetting God's greatest commandment of love. In mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis writes, a proud person is always looking down on things and people. And of course, as long as you are looking down, you cannot see something that is above you. We forget that revenge is not ours to make, but justice is for him to give. He is the ultimate judge who corrects every injustice and meets out the rightful punishment on people who wrong us. If we are to heed his call to holiness, we must trust his wisdom. This knowing feeling of bitterness and resentment, wanting to seek justice, 
desiring revenge to put people in their place. Following this abandoned belief of the ancient Mesopotamian culture of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth that was completely revamped by Jesus may not be good for one's heart, more so for one's soul. We may never know what God will do for a man of faith, one who forgives and trusts in God's redemptive love, but for sure, He will reward us. It can be one of many, healing from an illness or the prevention of such, a flourishing marriage, upright children, a job, a livelihood, a fantastic relationship, even wealth. It can be anything. But the ultimate reward, which I am sure all of us desire, the secret to a near heaven experience, is found in today's gospel reading when Jesus said to the repentant sinner, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, help me to clearly understand that justice is not mine to soil my hands with, but for you to dispose on those who have wronged me. Grant me the grace to forgive and to just love. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.